Hey, what's going on? It's your girl, Satasha Boy, Charlotte, Carolina. We got a collective video for you. First, we're going to finish up part two with Elizabeth Warren. Then we're going to slide on into your um, lovely uh, president, as she call him, Donald Jackass Trump. Didn't she call him Jackass or something? Or was that the no. parody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in the parody that we're going to go to at the end of Saturday Night Live. Um, like I said in the first video, I'm going to vote for her. Since the only other one is Bernie Sanders and you about to die any day now. Allegedly. All right, let's go. It takes a minute. All right. An American president should not go off and make impulsive decisions that the team doesn't even know about, as has just happened in Turkey. An American president should not lead us to abandon our allies who fought side by side. So that's the two. And you wanted the three? We need to be a country, once again, that lives our values. So we hold up our heads all around the nation, uh, world. And then people look to us and they said, there's a country where democracy works. There's a country where children are valued. There's a country where everyone gets an opportunity to build something. That not only helps us at home, it helps us everywhere in the world. Every single time that we get the chance to work with an ally, every single time that we get the chance to help a country strengthen its democracy, strengthen its respect for people, all of their people, every time we do that, we not only make that country stronger, we make ourselves stronger. We want alliances because it helps magnify our strength throughout the world. So for me to understand this, look at something like our Trump made crisis down at the border. The cost of that by not using our economic tools and continuing to invest in Central America, people have to flee because the government has been destabilized because people uh, fear for their lives, living and they see no future. You use your economic tools there. And then at the border, no great nation separates children from their families. <laughs> so that's kind of my one, two, three. How we build a foreign policy that helps us be a strong nation. We use all the tools in the toolbox. It just, I think this is critically important, but I really have to land on. We live our values every single day. That will make a strong nation. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, tell me your name. Yes, uh, Justin Scott. Hi, Justin Scott. How are you? My name I'm is good. How about you? <laughs> Doing good. My knee's good. a little sore. Your knee's a little sore. I'm sorry to hear that. It's been going on for a long time. Right. I am a uh, lifelong Iowan, and I am also an atheist. Okay. Um, any atheists in the room? <laughs> for the longest time, at least as long as back as I have been able to vote, candidates seem to always pander to the religious voter, especially the religious right. There is a huge opportunity in this election for some candidate or all the candidates to harness the power of the atheist voter. Last estimates, there's about 80 to 100 million of us that are unaffiliated with the political uh, side, if you will. <laughs> I'm curious today if you're willing to commit to hiring a secular outreach director. Many campaigns will hire a religious outreach director. Ooh. I think it would be fantastic for our country to bring all vo voices in, to bring all voters in. So that's a really interesting question, Justin. I haven't thought about it exactly for any because I'm going to one. But let me let me say something because I
because I think it's important. Um, you're an atheist. I'm a Methodist. But I grew up in a church that the first thing I ever learned was about the value of every single person. It was everything I learned. I'm not saying every Methodist is like that. That's not my job is to talk about all of them. I'll tell you what I learned from the time I was little. I was a Sunday school teacher. Uh, I taught fifth grade Sunday school. Man, that was an experience. <laughs> Woo! Um, all I can say is no one was injured. Uh, which actually was the bar in that particular fifth grade Sunday school. Uh, but it was always about respect for every person. And if I had to describe a single guiding principle for me, the deepest of faith for me, it's that every human being has value. Whether you call it God or a spirit, life, you can give it the name you want, but it's about respect. It's about valuing every human being. And that means you, and that means me, and that means all of you. But I'm going to think about it, okay? So, so let me just say to all of you, thank you for being here. You know, I know there are a lot of things you could be doing on a Tuesday night. Um, although we're not competing, at least I think, with football. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad you're here. I know that... You folks in Iowa put a lot of energy and thought into the presidential primaries. And 2020, what's coming up here is a big one. This is about the direction of our country, not just for four years or for eight years. This is about the direction of our country for generation after generation after generation to come. And I want to say I am grateful to you for the time and the energy and the thought you put into this. So thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. Don't notice the reporter wasn't trying to do with the small talk, even though he mentioned his knee. He wasn't a reporter, he was asking a question. Oh, well, in a question and answer. You ain't gonna flip to the next video, no. you just gonna... Oh, okay, okay. Alright. This is the one with your President Trump. The Republicans have to get tougher and fight. A day after Donald Trump repeatedly called out members of his own party for not doing enough to fight the Democratic-led impeachment inquiry. I don't think Republicans have been tough enough, though. You said that today. I think the Republicans should get tougher. The U.S. President stepping up his own attacks on the probe. In a tweet Tuesday, Trump comparing the inquiry to a lynching, evoking a dark chapter in U.S. history of brutal racial violence. Whenever his back is against the wall, a racial bomb is what we know of him to throw. Democratic lawmakers condemning Trump's remarks. He throws out race because he knows it's red meat, and he has done that consistently. That is one word no president ought to apply uh, to himself. A 2015 report by the Equal Justice Initiative it says from the Civil War until World War II, millions of African Americans were terrorized and traumatized by the lynching of thousands of black men, women, and children. The NAACP tweeting to compare impeachment to a lynching is both infuriating and disgusting. It supersedes any level of insensitivity and ignorance previously displayed by President Trump. No more excuses, no more explanations. Hashtag impeach hate. The impeachment inquiry launched last month by the Democrat-controlled House of Representatives centers on Trump's request for help from Ukraine to look into his Democratic political rival, Joe Biden, and Biden's son. Trump has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing and has dismissed the proceedings as a hoax and witch hunt, but his tweet marks the first time he's likened it to a lynching. This is a sham. This is a joke. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham defending Trump. Yeah, this is a lynching in every sense. This is un-American. Trump's tweet coming on the same day as the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine, Bill Taylor, a key witness in the impeachment inquiry, testified behind closed doors 
on Capitol Hill. Taylor's high-profile appearance is considered key in the probe because of his text message previously released by House investigators in which he said it was crazy to withhold military aid from Ukraine for domestic political reasons. And the U.S. aid was frozen before Trump's July 25th Ukraine phone call and later released. One Democrat calling Taylor's testimony very disturbing. where's this neck broke? Nowhere. All right, we're going to hit and do it on a, on, on a lighter note. Going to end on a lighter note. This is SNL's parody of Elizabeth Warren. And um, you're going to look at the screen first. And then you're going to, you know, we love our shit. So they can see everything. Um, it's kind of like her, yo. Don't you think so? My favorite part is the fight. Because she sounded like she would say that all the time and she was joking. And tell him nobody can can see him pointing his finger and then balling up his fist. Well, you'll see, the, you'll see it. All right, here we go. And is the first major Democrat to throw her hat in the ring, Senator Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> Are you excited about your campaign? Well, you bet, Colin. I, I haven't been this excited since I found out my package from L.L. Bean had shipped. <laughs> I, I'm ready to fight. Are you in this fight, Colin? Because I want you in this fight. We got fight. <laughs> you say that word fight a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the only F word I know, Colin, because I'm a fighter. <laughs> I, I'm fighting for the middle class. I'm fighting for Medicare for all. I'm like if Monday Night Raw was hosted by NPR's Terry Gross. <laughs> That's right. Supporters really like that about you, right? Well, you're damn right. Cause, you know, I've been fighting my whole life, right? I, I grew up in Oklahoma in between some railroad tracks and a sand tornado. <laughs> Whittling my tornado. own toys. My only friends were an empty can and a bull weevil. And while Donald Trump was playing with a silver spoon, I was playing on the train tracks with one of these things. <laughs> well, Politico, and you saw what are those things? Yeah, the saying that you are What do you think about that? Well, I, look, yeah, I'm sorry I'm not young and pretty okay. like Donald mm. Jackass Trump. <laughs> Colin, well, was the article sexist? Of course it was. Am I likable? Prob not. But neither is a prostate exam. But you need one or you'll die. This country, this country, Colin, is long overdue for a finger up its caboose. You might even like it. So bend over, America, and let Mama Warren get to work. <laughs> Great point. Great point. What do you think the other uh, potential candidates would no, be about? No, well, look, I'm not worried. Biden and Bernie will be in their late 70s. Well, I am a spry and naughty 69. They <laughs> tell O'Rourke, there's a reason he's got a nice face and good skin. He ain't done anything. <laughs> Baby, don't know. <laughs> Baby, don't know. <laughs> okay, and what do you think about Kirsten Gillibrand? Oh, don't you mean Kirsten stole my brand? Yeah, Medicare for all. What a novel concept. I've been saying that since 1963 when I was running the Wells Fargo wagon out of my town. <laughs> Did that fight? That's right. And what about releasing the results of your DNA test? Do you think that will come back to haunt you? Well, you know what? I did the DNA test, and the test came back 100% bad idea. <laughs> Who knew race science wasn't a good PR strategy? Lost that fight. That's right. Lost it. But you still think that you can win. Well, I know the battle I'm facing. Look, America, you will do everything you possibly can to not vote for a woman for president. All I am asking is that you let me be that woman. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe, like, y'all know the rest. You know my slogan, this is your boy, Charlotte Carolina. And we out.